There we go. All right, everybody, good morning. And uh, thanks for uh, jumping on to today's webinar. Today, you got Jared and Josh, and uh, we're going to be talking about assembly copy options in Inventor. So first things first, who we are. Uh, I'm Jared. You guys are pretty familiar with me by now. And I'm a senior application engineer here at Mesa. I'm working on my 10th year. And uh, you can see me over there on the left. That's uh, actually from yesterday. So that's a more recent picture of, of me and the girls. And uh, on the right-hand side, I'll let Josh introduce himself. Morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Josh Wilson. I am the data management guy here at Mesa, one of. Um, I am Inventor and Revit certified here at Mesa. I'm uh, working on my what, seventh year starting here. Um, so I'll let Jared go ahead and uh, get going. All righty. So I'm uh, going to start this off with a quick poll um, after I introduce you guys to a couple of different options for copying your assembly. Um, so some of you might, have know, might know already that there are a few different ways to copy an assembly. Uh, you might have know a couple of them, but uh, there might be one or two here that you haven't heard of. So what we really want to talk about today is not necessarily is one better than the other, but are you using the right one for your particular situation? Uh, so we're going to talk a little bit about pack and go. We're going to talk about design assistant, the iLogic design copy option, copy assembly, and finally, we're going to take a look at the Vault copy design workflow. Um, one of my biggest pet peeves here is they're all the same words, they're just in a different order. Uh, so trying to keep track of which one's which and, and how do we go about doing those. So again, that quick poll that I told you about, it's going to be launching on your screen momentarily here. First question is, how many of these have you actually heard of? That's, of course, a multiple choice. Uh, you can pick different options there. So a lot of you, pretty much all of you, have heard of Pack and Go. Um, a pretty good chunk have heard of the copy design and the copy mirror assembly. A little less, about half of you have heard about Design Assistant, and not very many have heard about iLogic Design Copy, and that's about exactly where I thought the, the responses would be. Uh, so let me ask you one more. So that's how many you've heard of. How many of you actually used? And that's where you're going to see a poll right now. So you might have heard some, might not have used them. All right, so we got about uh, right around half and half. Half have used Pack and Go, uh, just under half have used Copy Design. Um, a few of you have used Design Assistant. Nobody's really used the iLogic Design Copy, and uh, only a couple of you have used the Copy Mirror Assembly. Uh, so that's good. That tells me that this webinar, that this information, I uh, definitely wanted to get that out into your guys' base of knowledge. And I guess one more question that we should ask here, uh, just to see the spread, how many of you guys are using the vault itself, uh, which will give you access to that vault copy design? And that's about a 50-50 split. And uh, about 55 yes, 45% no. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to take a look back at this PowerPoint. I'm going to run through a couple slides just to talk about a few of these and, and some of the highlights and uh, maybe a couple of the drawbacks as we go through them. Once we've talked about these, a couple quick slides, then we're actually going to jump over into the software and I'm going to run through a few of these workflows for you. Josh is going to take a look at the Paul Copy Design workflow as well. So first one is pack and go, and it looked like a vast majority of you at least know about this one uh, and also have used it. And this one's nice because it's going to create a complete copy of each of your files. Um, one of the drawbacks here is that it's going to use the same names. 
So what I typically use this one for, and I'm sure most of you use this one for, is this is good for sending a copy of your assembly uh, maybe to an outside party. Um, good thing about this is if you start with the top level drawing, it's going to pick that up and it's going to include all the assemblies and the subassemblies and the parts underneath it. A little bit of a drawback here, which you might have noticed or know already, is that it does not bring along linked drawings. So if you have a subassembly with a drawing, it's not going to bring that along for the ride. Vault also has a copy design feature in it, or uh, sorry, pack and go feature. Um, this it works pretty much the same as the inventor pack and go. It's just a little bit more robust. You have the ability for copy into single paths. Um, actually, you have the ability directly to with, within there to publish to SharePoint. Uh, if you have Vault Professional, you can publish directly to SharePoint from your pack and go. Um, you can actually set up uh, your pack and goes to email those files directly to a customer or just somebody in the inner office that doesn't have access to Vault that they need to see maybe the entire uh, assembly or a drawing or just anything out of Vault, you can do that. Uh, so that's the pack and go and um, like i said most of you have seen this and used it so we're not going to go too much more into that one because it's the most common i want to spend more time with some of these other options um, so design assistant design assistant is a pretty nice useful tool which is going to allow you to take your entire design uh, starting from a top level drawing or a top level assembly and then you're able to pick and choose or do the entire group of files to copy those from there you get some options as far as where you want to put them uh, you can put them in a new folder, uh, what name do you want to give them, and a few other things in there. Um, so you have the option to copy, rename, uh, you can replace files, and I actually have rename in there twice. Uh, so copy, rename, replace, or rename again uh, if you'd like to, and, uh, and tell it where you want it to go. This one, is, it tends to be a little bit more of a, a tedious process with a large assembly because you got to take a look at all those files you have to rename and uh, give each and every one of those a new name. The iLogic design copy, I call this one the hidden one. Uh, it's hidden, but it's also pretty useful. And uh, there's some pretty particular instances that I really like to use this. Now let's start with the name. So you're looking at this and saying iLogic design copy. Well, we don't use iLogic, or maybe I don't even know what iLogic is, so if you're gonna tune out for the next few minutes, please don't. Uh, because iLogic Design Copy, you don't need iLogic to use this tool. It works with uh, designs without iLogic. It actually works really well. Um, looking at those screenshots there, which we're going to dig into a little bit later on, a uh, nice thing is you start with the drawing on the top left screen. And you might notice there's a few drawings there that are picked for that vice design that I like to use. And uh, what that's telling you is that it is going to pick up those associated drawings that come along. So if you have a top level drawing with your assembly, and then your subassembly has its own drawing and maybe a, your part files have their own drawings, you can have everything come along for the ride. The other thing that it's gonna include in, in addition to the assemblies and parts is linked files. Uh, so one instance that I like to use this one for is uh, non-inventor files or linked files is if you have a design that's driven by a spreadsheet, for example, it's gonna pull that spreadsheet along for the ride and allow you to create a copy of that to rename it. The screenshot on the right hand side is just taking a look at the location and the new file names. The drawback with this one is, is that you're only able to use a prefix or a suffix. You cannot rename files individually. Um, and you also have some copy options, which you can see down there on the bottom right hand side of that screenshot. So this is a pretty useful tool, even if you're not using iLogic. I use very little iLogic. And I still find this one useful. The big thing is if I have non-inventor files that I want to come along for the ride, or if I have a design with a lot of drawings in it. So the copy mirror assembly, um, and it looks like quite a few of you have seen this one and some of you have even used it. The copy mirror assembly is a pretty useful tool. I'm starting to use it a little bit more often um, for copying a complete assembly or even mirroring a complete assembly. And there's some new options in there that have come along in the last couple of releases, including the copy or the mirror relationships option or the ground new components option that you can see down at the bottom of the two screenshots that are on your screen. Those are pretty useful. 
and then the ability to give files a new name um, using a prefix or a suffix, and we'll take a look at a few of those options as well. So you can give these custom names, you can apply a prefix or a suffix, so you're gonna get both of those things. Design Assistant only gave you names, iLogic only gave you prefix suffix, this one's gonna give you both. Uh, you can assign files to a new location, and then the option that I like is you can insert that into the current assembly or more likely put it into its own assembly uh, separate from the one you're working in. All right, so Josh is going to run over a couple of the highlights of the copy design in the vault, and then we're going to actually get into the software and try some of these out. So basically with the copy design in vault, it's everything that Jared said, but better. <laughs> So what we're going to have here, um, the only downfall to this is obviously you have to have Vault. And if you don't have Vault, give me a call. We'll get you hooked up. But uh, what we're going to be able to do here is, and there, there is two different models of this copy design utility. That's that image that we have up here. The image that I have is for Vault Workgroup and Vault Professional. So if you do have Vault Basic, it is going to look a little bit different, but you're going to be able to get the same effects. Um, but with this, we're able to do a group of files, a whole assembly, a folder structure, whatever we need to, uh, we can rename a single file at a time. We can do a mass find and replace. We can do a prefix. We can do a suffix um, to everything or just a group of files. And we have the ability to keep it in the same folder, move it to a whole new folder hierarchy. Um, we can add different parts of my assembly to different folder hierarchies. So we can get into all of that in the, the, the show and tell portion here, but um, there are a couple beefy functions with this as well. So if you are using iLogic, um, maybe you haven't noticed this, but if you do a copy design inside of Vault, defaultly it removes all that iLogic off of there. With this, you have the ability to create an action rule to maintain all the information that you want to maintain on the files and then wipe everything else off. So if you want to maintain all that iLog iLogic information, you can set up an action rule to maintain all that info. And we can go over that in a second. Yeah. All right, so let's take a look over on the inventor side. And I'm going to pull up a couple of different designs that we're going to use um, just to show the workflow for them. So the first one I want to take a look at is the design assistant tool. And you're going to notice that I'm actually just going to go ahead and minimize my inventor and get all the way back to my desktop. Because I need to browse out, I'm still getting used to my Windows 10, so bear with me as I find my Inventor Design Assistant. I am in the wrong place. And I'll bring Design Assistant up onto the wrong screen. So Design Assistant works outside of the Inventor. I'm going to go ahead and go to open and I'm going to find the design that I want to work with. I'm going to start with the top level drawing for this trailer hitch design. Make sure I'm on the manage section over here on the left hand side. And now I'm going to take a look here. I'm going to select all of these actions. I'm going to right select, right click and select copy. It's going to let me know, hey, this requires edit. That one's obvious. So I need to take a look at my file location, my subfolder, and the new name that I want to give it. Let's stretch these out a little bit here so we can see these. We don't really need that stock number, that revision column. Uh, let's expand this one out here as well. So I'm going to start off with this one. I'm going to go to change path. And I've done this in a while. Let's try to do this as a group. We're going to do a change path here and I'm going to create a new path. We'll make a new folder right in here and we'll call this new trailer hitch design. Select that. We'll click OK and that's going to add it into each of those. So now we talked about the file names and now one key important thing with Inventor whether you're using the vault or not is we want to try to maintain uh, unique file names. Um, it's just making the project work a little bit smoother. Everything works nicely. Um, I mentioned that I can't do prefix or suffix. Um, I could do kind of a manual prefix or suffix method by going with new underscore. And this is kind of cheating a little bit, not giving it any unique names. But I'm going to do a control C for that. 
I'll take this one, copy that manual prefix, and you can see why I said that this one, this method can be a little bit tedious, but this is really helpful if you do want to take a look at giving things unique names that doesn't happen to involve a prefix or suffix like what I'm, I'm making happen right here. Uh, this is also good if new if files are going into different places, uh, so different photo locations, you can control all of that. I also talked about the design assistant is a really useful tool if you simply want to uh, change the name of a file. Again, if you're not working in the vault, you want to change file name, have it update some references, you can do that here as well. Uh, once I have everything set in here, you can see modified is all set to change. I'll do a save. It's going to run through and it's going to create all those files for me. Updates are complete. Let's go ahead and close the design assistant. We'll switch back to inventor. And now when we go to open, if everything went well, we should see our new trailer hitch design. And then there are all of our new files uh, that we just created. So design assistant, again, a pretty useful tool if you want to control individual file names and individual file locations, uh, working from a top level drawing or top level assembly down through all of those parts and sub assemblies. Let's next take a look at the iLogic design copy tool. And again, you're gonna notice I'm not gonna start with file open. And that is a key here. You need to have all of your files closed. So you're just looking at your home screen. Over on the tools tab, you'll see the iLogic design copy. You remember I mentioned that this was the hidden command. I don't know why it's hidden so well. Uh, that's probably why a lot of you haven't heard of it and even more of you haven't used it, um, even though it is a pretty useful tool. Before I jump into that though, I did wanna give you guys a quick look at the file we're gonna work with. So hold that thought right there. I'm gonna open up my bookshelf and uh, some of you might recognize this from the webinar that I did uh, last week or two, I'm sorry, two months ago. Uh, this was that bookshelf design that I did. And let me find my bookshelf multi-body part model. And I added a little bit of a tweak to this in that I created an Excel spreadsheet that you're looking at right now where I can control the sizes. So let's minimize this down a little bit. And we're gonna shrink this down. So just to show you how well this works, I'm gonna change some of these dimensions in here. Uh, width, we'll make that 48. And we'll change our, sh our depth to 18. I'll save this Excel sheet. When I switch back over to the inventor side, and Wait for that update for a moment. Forgot to hit the actual update button. You see everything changed for me pretty nicely because all of my parameters are linked back to that Excel spreadsheet. So in this situation, I have a design. It's actually a multi-body part design that's then extracted out into an assembly. Again, we talked about that a couple months ago in a webinar. Uh, but in this case, I added a nice little tweak that it's controlled by an Excel spreadsheet. So this is an example of a linked file that's not an inventor file. So let me go ahead and close this. I do want to save that. I'm going to actually open up that assembly and make sure it gets updated along for the ride, just to make sure everything's good, saved, and current. And then we're going to close that down. All right, so remember I said, have to have all your files closed in order for this one to work out well. Uh, that's because this tools tab, iLogic design copy, it doesn't show up. Unless they change that, it doesn't show up when you have actual files open. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that. And it's on my wrong screen. So I'm gonna pull that over here to the correct screen. So this one, we're gonna take a few moments just to make sure we got everything selected. I'm gonna scroll down and I'm gonna find in my bookshelf, I want the bookshelf drawing. You will notice that I have another drawing here for that decorative bottom piece. I am gonna grab that as well uh, with another click. Now we start taking a look at these other screens and we're gonna notice that it pre-selects my assembly. It's also going to pre-select all of my part files. So that's taken care of for me. Now we wanna take a look over here in my non-inventor files. And dig down into the correct folder. And you're gonna see that it is gonna bring along that spreadsheet uh, automatically as well. So I didn't have to click anything extra except for the all the drawings that I wanted to bring over and then it's going to grab all associated files and everything that it sees there. From here I can go ahead and click next 
now I got some more options that I want to play with. So the first thing I want to do is I need to browse out and find a new target folder. Um, so let's go out to my save location. Webinars in here, and I'm going to add a new folder in here, and this is going to be my updated bookshelf. Spelled semi-correctly, I think. So updated bookshelf, we'll click OK there, and that's going to fill in uh, all those targets for me. Now I mentioned whenever we're looking at the slides that you can't do, you cannot do individual file names here. Uh, we do have the option for a new file prefix or a new file suffix. So I'm going to do an updated suffix. And you can see that's filled in uh, for me all along the way there. One thing to note here is you're going to notice that by default, that Excel spreadsheet was not updated automatically with that rename. You can choose to add that in. That way it breaks it off and gives it its own file. Uh, so that's important to note when you have a non-inventor file here. A couple other options here. If you did have iLogic rules, again, this is a situation where uh, this one in particular works really well with iLogic. We don't in this case, but if we did, we could choose to delete those rules. We can also choose to update the part number. Um, we also have a create new project or a use source project over here that I almost missed. Um, so you have the option to actually create a new project file as you're going about this. I'm going to go ahead and click start. And we got a dialog box that you guys are not seeing because it's on the wrong screen, but it is working through and updating all those files for me. Um, so it's going to run through all those files and let me know if it's updated and that it got updated successfully. Design job finished successfully. We'd like to see that. I'll click close. Let's go out and open up that new file. Take a look for it. Update a bookshelf. It buried itself back into there and let's take a look at the multi-body part to start off with and one thing I did want to make sure is that you could see it's given the Excel file the, the new file name so it's using the correct file we don't have to make any changes to this it's good to go there okay. so that's the second copy method um, I like that one. Like I said, that one is hidden. It's a little bit harder to find, but it does have some nice options to grab some non-inventor files. Um, what do we do with all these files with the prefix and suffix now? We could actually take this back into Design Assistant now, this new design, and do a rename on it uh, to rename all those files to maybe better files. Why didn't I start on Design Assistant from the beginning? Because like I mentioned, Design Assistant is not going to bring along non-inventor um, it's also not going to be able to bring along those extra drawings. In this case, I had two extra or an extra drawing there. Design Assistant would not bring that along. All right. So in this third option now, we're going to be taking a look. And this one, we are going to open up the file to start off with. Uh, this one is pretty cool. Like I said, this is one that's been around for a while, but I just recently started using it more and more because it has some new options. And... Uh, this is kind of a cool workflow, but this is the copy and the mirror assembly tool. Uh, I'm actually gonna focus on the mirror here. Uh, they really work the same way. The dialog boxes are pretty much the exact same. It's just the option of, do you want to copy the files or do you want to mirror it? Uh, so in this case, this platform, you can see that it opens up on the right-hand side as you walk up the steps. I want to mirror this so it opens up on the left-hand side as I walk up the steps. We have two different options for this platform. Uh, right hand, left hand, you could think of it like that. Uh, so components, I'm gonna grab my entire design, my entire platform. You're gonna see these circles pop up. And if we hover over these, it's gonna let us know exactly what those are. So it's gonna mirror the object, uh, it's gonna reuse the object, or you have the option to exclude objects. Uh, so this is a, a nice bonus on this one where you can um, see in a nice handy list what files you are going to mirror, reuse, or exclude. You see that some of these files are automatically yellow and some are automatically green, letting you know that uh, it's reusing them versus copying or mirroring them. And that is an option down here to reuse standard content and factory parts. So if you're using content center stuff, um, it's just gonna reuse that because you're not gonna create a mirror of a bolt. So it's not even gonna try. Um, 
So for this example, it's all going to be the exact same parts. It's just in a mirrored orientation. So this one's going to be a little bit easier and it's simplified like that on purpose. Uh, so I need to switch everything to yellow. So I'll just click that circle at the top for platform. Run down through that list, just make sure everything's yellow, which tells me it's all going to be uh, reused just in a mirrored orientation. The mirror plane itself, we have some handy dandy um, XY or planes here that we can pick from. I'm going to switch to the XY plane. And you're going to see a preview pop up here, an idea of what, you, of what we're going to be starting with. So that looks pretty good there. I'm going to go ahead and click Next. And here's where I have a destination option. So I can put this right into this assembly, or I can say, you know what, I'm actually going to create a new assembly, put it in a new window. Um, that way I have two separate files here to work with. I get prefix suffix options down here in the naming scheme, or I can come up here to new name and I can give this thing a new name, uh, including files if I had any files that I can give them individual names. Same with file location. So this one's got some nice extra tools in it where you can do prefix suffix, you can do a unique name, you can change file location for individual files. Uh, you get nice options to copy, reuse files, including a preview there. Uh, so some nice tools there. Go ahead and click OK. And this is going to open up in my new assembly. And it's reusing all the same parts, but this is just orientated on the left-hand side, uh, left-hand opening. All right. So there's a couple different workflows there for you. And uh, ran through all three of them. Josh is going to take a look at the vaulted option now, and then we'll come back and we'll talk about these a little bit more before we wrap up for the day. Uh, I'm going to switch over to giving Josh control of the mouse and let him talk for a little bit. All righty. So what we're going to go over here is uh, we're just going to do a copy design on our spider lifter three arm. I can take a look here inside a vault. This is just my general spider lifter three arm lifter pulley. If you've ever sat through a class with me, uh, you've seen this before. Um, but we're going to look here, and what we want to do is in this lifter, we are going to be making a change to, or we're going to be reusing this sleeve right here and this spider down here. Um, all we're going to do is change this from a three-arm lifter pulley to a four-arm lifter pulley, and then we can come back through and repattern our linkage and content center if we needed to as well. So all I need to do to get my copy design going is right click in my vault on my file and I can do a copy design down here. Now this is gonna bring up this new window here and what we are gonna be able to see inside of here is our entire model on our left hand side. Now what I prefer to do is right click, expand all that way I can see every single component that I'm looking at. Now I did mention earlier about the um, action rules. If you wanted to create a new action rule, you could come up here to action rules. And this is on the other screen. This is where you're gonna be able to set those new rules. We can see we have one already, but I can create one, call it whatever, um, but I have my rule builders, what I'm going to be looking for. If I want to um, keep the um, part number or stock number the same, uh, I can make sure that all of that is being done in the background, that I don't have to worry about doing it uh, once my copy is done. So I'm just going to get, go ahead, use the default rule set for here. We also have a couple of different options up here, include children and include or is select copy settings. But all we need to do is I know that I'm going to be copying my spider lifter three arm. If I look down here for my spider three arm, I'm going to hold down control and then my sleeve three arm. Now these are the only components that I need to copy to make everything work. And I'm just going to reuse everything else. So I'm just going to right click and I want to say copy two. This is going to allow me to define a new folder that I want everything to go into. So I'm going to go under webinars, inventor, AOTC designs, and I'm going to create a new folder and just call it my spider lifter forearm. All right. Now I can see I have a little asterisk here. Let me know that it's going to create that. 
Once I have that selected, I'll hit OK. And then uh, I can see a couple things over here. My main tab that I want to be on is this numbering tab. This is where I'm going to be able to see everything that I want to do for my name changing. Um, with Vault, you do have the option to set a prefix or a postfix. I can do that by setting default prefix and postfix values. Jared has E in here, but we're just going to pull that out and make it blank. Might help if I. Set values, prefix. Okay. Pull that out of there. And all I want to do is in my name, I'm going to change all my sleeve spider and spider lifter from three arm to four arm. So I can come in here and do find and replace. I want to find three and replace it with four. Do a replace all. I can see that updated over here. So now I know that my new files are going into my spider lifter forearm directory and I renamed them four. Now I'm going to go ahead and hit copy. Now you might be asking about the uh, drawings that are associated to this. Vault should by default uh, copy over any related documents. So if you did have an Excel sheet, it would show up here as an attachment that you would have the ability to copy. Uh, but if you had a direct parent for a drawing, anything like that, it should automatically grab that. Now I'm going to go ahead and close out of here. I can see here's my spider lifter forearm folder now. And there we go. We can see I have my assembly that I created. I still have my spider lifter forearm drawing, my sleeve drawing, and then those two parts that I need to modify. So I could go through, get my local copy of these, check them out, uh, update them to be a four arms instead of three arms, and then we should be good to go. If I look at my uses still, I can still see that Vault, like always, is going to maintain all that file relationship to all those other components in there. All right, Jerry. All right. All right. So just a just a couple things to recap here, um, and a couple things to mention is that uh, we got four or five different very useful tools for copying your designs. Um, so some things you want to ask yourself. We all know about Pack and Go. Pack and Go will create a complete copy of a design that you can send um, either internally or mainly out uh, external to your company. Um, we have a few options if you're not using the Vault, and then the copy design if you are using the Vault. And uh, I think it's pretty safe to say that if you do have the Vault, copy design is certainly the way to go because uh, it offers you the most options and does just about everything the other ones do individually well. Uh, it handles it all. What about for those of us who don't use the Vault? Well, we got three other options that are really good, uh, but you might just want to take a look at your situation for that particular design and uh, which one's going to give you the best option there. Again, just because, uh, just because you know one really well doesn't mean that it's always going to work for you. You might have a situation where you have an Excel file or you have a lot of drawings that you want to bring along for the ride um, or you, uh, you want to do individual file names. Whatever the case may be, there's a few different options there for copying your assembly. Uh, so I do want to ask you guys, before we go through a couple of last things, uh, all of these options that you saw, which option are you most interested to try out or maybe see some value that you didn't know existed uh, in the past? Looking like as the votes are coming in at the iLogic design copy, almost half of you uh, definitely want to give that a shot. And that's great because that's one that I don't think many of you, if I remember back to the, the poll, not many of you even knew it existed and certainly most of you hadn't even tried that. So we're looking about half of you looking at iLogic design copy. Um, about another 10 to 15 percent design assistant and copy mirror assembly. Um, that copy mirror assembly, that's a pretty cool tool. Um, of course, it doesn't bring any drawings along for it. But if you have a design, especially if you want to make a right hand, left hand op, um, assembly, that one's really cool for that. Um, then about 30% of you are going to be taking a look at the copy design in the vault. 
uh, maybe for the first time or maybe saw some new options that you didn't know were in there. That's good. That's what we like to like to see whenever we uh, push out these webinars. All right, so a couple more slides that we want to take a look at. Uh, this is going to be some of the generic stuff that if you've sat through my webinars, you've seen these slides before, but I push them every time uh, because they are important. Let me close that first of all. So do you have ideas? Idea station. Um, what is the idea station? So the idea station, again, if you haven't seen it yet, um, that means you need to join more webinars that I do. Uh, but the idea station is where you can go submit your ideas for the software. So Inventor has its own idea station. Vault should too, I believe, right? Vault should too, yes. Vault has its own idea station. Uh, so you, if you have an idea, uh, let's say, for example, why are there three different ways to copy my assembly, make it one, make it better outside of the vault, you can go put that idea up. Um, other users see that. Other users like you and me. And uh, we give it a vote up, give it a thumbs up. And developers are watching this. Actually, it's a developer-ran site, so they uh, see it and they see what's popular, and um, hopefully get that idea into a future release of the software. So I always show this because I always just want to make sure that you guys know, as users, that you control the future of this of these products. You control the future of Inventor, AutoCAD, the Vault, and uh, if there's a tool that you want to see or a workflow that you think could be better, get that idea out there. Uh, so that other users can see it, get on board with it, developers can see it, and uh, make this software better. Just to add a note in, I believe 80% uh, of Vault 2018 new features were all pulled from that idea station. So you guys are really getting your ideas out there. They're seeing it. They, they know, and uh, they're actually implementing them. So if, yeah. if you do see something or, or want something to work a little bit differently, please get it out there. They're, they will try to make it feasible for you. All right. One question here. I think Josh can answer this one live. Does the Vault Copy Design have an option to include all content center files to make a self-contained package like Pack and Go, but include drawings of all these sub-assemblies? That sounds like it might be the Vault Pack and Go, right? Yeah, there is that Vault Pack and Go feature um, that would be able to grab everything pertaining to whatever file it is you're trying to get. Uh, so if you did select that top level IDW or DWG, um, it's going to grab everything that that file needs to exist, and then you can tell it to look for additional documentation. So parents of children, you could get and send that all out into one one package for, like I said earlier, either directly to a, a Windows directory, um, to your SharePoint directory, if you have SharePoint, uh, to an email recipient, or anything like that. Yeah. All right. So a couple of other things to keep an eye on. Keep an eye on our upcoming Mesa events, including upcoming webinars. Uh, as you guys have, have seen, we like to try to do at least one of these a month. Uh, so keep an eye out for what's coming up next. And uh, if you missed the previous webinar, or if you wanted to get a copy of this one, you can find those on our website. And uh, it usually takes about a day or so for new ones to get placed up there. That screenshot's actually a little bit old. I believe webinars now falls under the training category. Um, so I'll have to update that for next time. But um, if you missed the previous one, want to rewatch it, or uh, if you want to watch this one again, check out our website. They're going to be posted, posted up there. And uh, of course, any questions, any comments, any feedback that you guys have, uh, feel free to reach out to us, reach out to Mesa Support, uh, even ideas for topics that you'd like to see in a future webinar. Uh, shoot those to me. And um, thank you guys for joining us on our J Squared show. And I will see you guys next time.